Let's have a gander at uh, Revit software and how to do slab joints and how to draw those and model those things. So what are we talking about here? Well, in this view here that I just zoomed into, that's a basement plan and it's a couple of levels underground. So this slab is a slab on ground. And on ground, slabs on ground normally have a bunch of different slab joints and control joints to control shrinkage of them as they cure so that they they cure in a way that you can control the cracking and you don't get some horrible messy things going everywhere all over the place and cracks that you don't like. So in this one we've got uh, key joints going up and down the page. Uh, horizontally we've got uh, expansion joints and we have saw joints, sometimes these are tool joints which are just little nicks in the top of the slab basically which control the shrinkage of this slab as it as it cures. Uh, typically too on a slab on ground you might see a um, construction joint where you have a stop work between pores but uh, the, 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 the heavy lines in this case are that's one pore basically so the expansion joints and the key joints are in this case construction joints. Now in suspended concrete slabs you still get the construction joint especially if you've got between stages like this one stage one to stage two and stage one and stage two are like a year or two apart so there's a fair bit of time between those stages they're, they're permanent stitch joints basically so you look at those differently but with a sus big suspended slab especially with this one uh, it's a post tension slab so we have to control uh, in the temporary and the permanent case uh, movement. Now there's a permanent movement of the entire building and there's a temporary movement because of the compression that post-tension slabs put on it. So we have these TMJs and over here temporary movement joints and PMJs in the middle here. So let's go back to our ground now. So we've talked about our joints types. Let's look at how we actually draw and model them. Now with the slab on ground this detailing only exists on this plan. So I've just modeled it with lines. So if I go into um, manage additional settings line styles, don't worry about saving it at the moment. We've got a bunch in here, construction joints, SOG, SOG, slab on ground, expansion joints, isolation joints, key joints, and saw joints down the bottom here. You can see saw joints is like a very light peach just to make it differentiate itself because otherwise there was a lot of black on black on black on black on a white background on that drawing. So that's done really simple, simply. Now with the, the ground floor though, we've done it differently and I'll show you why. So I'll just go back to the basement plan. If I duplicate that plan, so if I wanted to do top and bottom reinforcing on this drawing, which I don't have to do with the slab on ground because it's just a common mesh throughout and some trimmers so it's covered by typical details if I duplicate that view you won't get those joints showing up now you could duplicate it with detailing but then you get everything else on there as well so you might find that un undesirable so let's go back to the ground view now and look at this it's actually a loadable family it's a generic model and if I edit that family you can see that it's a line based family so generic model line based family and because of that we can set its height we can bring it in onto a level and set its height and we can drape it over the concrete slab that it is sitting on so we've got three options in there temporary movement joints the movement joint which is the permanent movement joint and the construction joints and they have different line work depending on which one you're applying to. So when I go to a 3D view now you actually see the permanent movement joint in the 3D model draping over the slab. Now PMJs are pretty important they're very expensive to put in. Uh, some of the actual um, shear joint connectors can be six to nine hundred Australian dollars each. So what's that Four, four or five hundred US dollars, maybe maybe a bit less, but you can imagine if they're at regular centers, it can be a very expensive uh, element. 
So uh, it's good. It's you, you want to coordinate those PMJs well, and also they affect the architecture because uh, waterproofing and where you place them just can't be anywhere. So they, they, this design, these two buildings basically move independently and that PMJ makes them be able to do that. Now, um, this building isn't designed for a seismic area. Uh, so seismic designs have even more extensive permanent movement joints in them. Now the advantage of that situation is if you 3D model it with a generic model is if I duplicate this view, so if I duplicated this view, this is for, say for the bottom and top reinforcing plan or the post tension plan or other plans, fire rating plans, loading plans, whatever you want to do. Now there's a lot of stuff you don't want. You don't want all the tags and all that stuff, but you do want the joints. You want that on every plan. So when I, when I duplicate it now without the de detailing, those PMJs come through. So there's a few of my power tips on slab joints using Revit software for the structural drafter.